So now that you've seen a little bit of the entity slash component design pattern, it's actually time to put the rubber against the road and and make it do its job. So I'm going to come here in the engine and say add new folder. I'm going to call it entities. And generally components and entities are reusable. And so the ones that are reusable I'll put in the engine. But the game specific ones, and we will create game specific ones, go in the the game project, but our foundation will definitely be in the entities uh, folder here in the engine. Right click and class. I think I missed it there. Let me try again. Click add, call it entities. Or no, no, entity. Okay, an entity will be the container for all of our components, and the components are the bottle caps, the things that'll interact, and the entity is kind of like the Venn diagram, or at least one circle in the Venn diagram. Hit enter. Visual Studio being so helpful drops the uh, class files that I just added down here in the root of the engine project. So I actually have to highlight both of those holding down control and clicking and then dragging it up to the entities folder. And then this pragma once we've seen several times the pragma once is a way it's 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 the workaround to header guards. Header guards are kind of old and clunky but I am aware of some compilers, especially for some consoles, that do not support the Pragma once. Pragma, pound Pragma is a preprocessor preprocessor instruction <laughs> that basically means Pragma pro pro program specific compiler specific. Basically, it's an instruction to the compiler to say, hey, when we say once. Uh, only include this header file once, the contents of this header file once. So Pragma is basically a general preprocessor instruction that compilers can customize all they want to, very compiler specific, and then once means, hey, only include this once. However, since not all compilers support this, I take it out and put the uh, pound if define, not define. But I'm getting kind of tired of going pound if and f engine entity h control l control v v and doing pound un not pound define pound define and then pound and f right there and then coming up here putting a white space there control l control l i'm getting tired of doing that for every single header file i add and when we do components we're going to be adding a lot of classes and that sort of thing so i'm so tired of it i want to map a hotkey to this i'm going to control z everything I just did and get it back to how it was when we originally added it and I'm going to hit control shift R to start recording a macro you see this showed up at the top and now it's recording all of my keystrokes so I shall do control home just to force the cursor to the top of the screen and I have to be careful here with my keystrokes but if I do my keystrokes in a way that will always work no matter what document is open as long as the document is in the exact same format as I'm recording the macro then the macro will work for all those documents all right so control home to get us to the top and then down arrow control right arrow when you hold down control and you hit right arrow the cursor skips over tokens or words control shift right arrow that will highlight the name of the class control C to copy the uh, class name Control Home, Control Shift L to delete the line, Control Enter to insert a line, Pound, if not defined, Engine, underscore, Control V to post the class name there, underscore H, Control Shift Left Arrow to highlight this, Control Shift U to uppercase it, Home Key to move the cursor to the beginning of the line, Control L, Control V V, up arrow, right arrow, control shift, uh, right arrow, uh, let go of control shift, no, hold down shift, and then left arrow, define, uh, down arrow, control enter to insert some white space, control end to move to the end of the document, pound, end if, that's not how you spell end if, but again, we're recording my keystrokes, so I can do this again. It'll record all those backspaces I just did. And if, control home to move the cursor to the top, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, 
down arrow. I'm not big on constructors and destructors just given to me like this. So control L, control L, control S to save. And I shall go here and hit the stop button, stop recording. And then watch this. I'm going to just control Z all of this just to prove to you that this works. Control Y, and then watch. I'm going to hit control shift P, and boom. There we go. And then and then later we're going to add a component class, but we might as well do that now. Add class. I'll hit click add. I'll say components. Hit enter. Component is a reserved class name for real. It is not a reserved class name. It's only special to Visual Studio, and Visual Studio is making me mad. So let's let's uh, hack hack Visual Studio. I'm going to say component H for now. Click finish. That generates these files. I'm going to come in here, F2, and get rid of the H on the end so I can actually get my uh, component class there. And then I'll also remove the H's here. Uh, and then anywhere in this file, since I set up the macro for me to be able to, uh, the macro's first step is to control home and move the cursor to the top, I should be able to hit control shift P, which will play my macro and will auto format this document. The problem is control shift P plays back only the macro that we just barely recorded. If I want to record a new macro, I will lose the macro that I just created. So I want to save this macro away and assign it to one of the hotkeys on my computer so I don't have to deal with all those headaches. So let's go to Tools, Macro, see Temporary Macro, Control Shift P. But I don't want it to be temporary anymore. I want it to be permanent. So I actually haven't clicked Save Temporary Macro before. Mm, let's go to the Macro Explorer. I don't know if I trust that. Uh, recording module. Let's double click on the recording module and here we go. Microsoft Visual Studio Macros. Okay, you can see here all of my keystrokes were reco recorded and turned into these commands essentially. This is Visual Basic we're looking at. Not Visual Basic.net, but Visual Basic. This is hideous, but this is how we automize, automate our editor. You can also do the same thing in Microsoft Word when I was writing books. I use Microsoft Word all the time and make macros like this. But anyway, I, I want to save all these keystrokes. I want to get it out of my temporary macro recording module. So I'm actually going to right click here, say add module. Let's call it me module. Hit enter and now I have me module. I'm going to click, go back to the recording module. I'm going to highlight all of this, grab this, control C. This is all the commands we created by hitting the keystrokes while we were recording our macro. Now go back to me module, I'm going to paste it here. So me module is not going to be the temporary module anymore. This is going to be a slightly more permanent. Let me get rid of that space there. Now sub, this is short for sub procedure or method. It's basically here's the beginning of the method. Let's run all these commands. Here's the end of the method. So the sub and n sub are our curly braces. I don't want to call it temporary macro anymore. I want to call it format header guards. And I don't know how to spell guards. Is that right? I'm going to, hold on, let me go look at Google for a minute. And as always, I misspelled it. So G U A R D format header guards. I'm going to save this. Okay, now that's part of it. It's saved with all the other macros in my Visual Studio installation. And now I want to map it to a hotkey. So let's close that and go Tools, Options. See, I already have keyboard selected. Je environment, Keyboard. And I'm going to say Format, Header, Guards. And when you type up here, it essentially filters out the list that was down here. In fact, let me remove that first. And you see here are all the commands you can do in Visual Studio. It's a super long list. But basically anytime you click around anywhere, do anything in Visual Studio, buttons or menus or anything, they all map to these commands. Right? And so you can totally program Visual Studio to to make new commands. That's what the macros were. I can invoke any of these commands inside of a macro, which is really cool. I didn't do that in my case. I just did the record a macro and let's play the macro. But you can literally invoke any sort of Visual Studio command that you want from a macro. But since we already have our macro, I, I want to filter format header guards. 
And you can see that is found in macros.mymacros.me module. We created me module format header guards. And now we can click down here and we can hit some hotkeys to see what's assigned to that hotkey and we can reassign the hotkey. For example, if I hit control KF, that is the hotkey for formatting the selection. All right, well, I don't want to overwrite that hotkey because I use it a lot. All right, let me do another one. Control S. Well, that's save. <laughs> we don't want to ruin save, so I got to find some sort of hotkey or hotkey key chord. A key chord is when you do two keys like Control KF. That's a key chord. If you've ever done music and you've played chords, then there you go. But Control KF, uh, that's not going to work. Let's do Control K, I don't know, O? Okay, Control KO is not assigned to anything. And uh, if it was assigned to something, but it was something I never used, then I could reassign that hotkey key chord. Anyway, I'm going to click Assign. So now when I hit Control KO, that will execute Format Header Guards. All right, hopefully I remember that hotkey. I'm going to click OK, and I can go anywhere in here, Control K O, and there we go. Header guards are formatted. I have my class component. I'm good to go. So there you go. That's how you create macros, playback macros, get some hotkeys, that sort of thing. Uh, sorry for the tangent, but we'll stop the video there and then come back and continue building our entity component system.